Mas charge. Mas Maxi. The egg ready. You have the pig. Guys, can you hear Mas George or Mas Maxi? My eggs that I'm gonna trade with them are ready. But now I'm gonna be cooking ham, eggs, pancake, and what's the, th what's the fourth thing? Ham, eggs, pancakes, oh, planting. But I need the pigs in order to make my ham. That's where currency and money started. When my desire to give my eggs or to trade my eggs with Mas Maxi was equal to Mas Maxi's desire to give me pig so I could make the ham that I'm going to prepare today. Barter system or barter trading is where currency was born. And today, while I'm making breakfast for you, my dear rock stars, I will be talking about the evolution of money from, as I said, cows to crypto and exactly where we're gonna go. So let me give Mas George and Mas Maxi another shout because I can't start without the ham, right? And they need the eggs for their family's breakfast. So just a second. My channel my youtube family today i am coming to you from our kitchen and i'll be talking to you about a time when we use cows to a time when we're now using crypto and trying to evaluate what's next and i will be making breakfast for you you know why because I'm still trying to win your subscription if you haven't subscribed yet. And for those who have subscribed, my rock stars, I'm so grateful. I'm trying to win your likes. Yeah, no shame in my game. I'm here working to satisfy you. So subscribe and hit the like button. So we'll be doing simple meals. I was gonna do pancakes, but I think it's gonna take too much time. So I'm kinda changing my mind. So I'm gonna do eggs. I'm gonna do bacon, not ham, or ham, no, ham, not bacon. And I'll also be doing some planting. Now, I'm gonna be using what I call my lazy people skillet. And I call this my lazy people skillet because I can cook, as you can see here, one, two, well, this is one, two, well, this is at one large slot, but one, two, three, four, five different things without them touching, and I have one pot to wash. And you can get it on Goffer. I'll put the link in the description below, or you can go into our Goffer gallery, which is our store at Southdale Plaza. So, because it has a little pancake slot, I'll probably do a few pancakes. So I'll put in the plantain, I'll do the pancakes here, and then I will do the, what's it, the eggs. Probably I'll scramble the eggs, I don't know. Let's see how it goes. But most importantly, uh, I'm gonna be talking to you about the evolution of currency. And as you know, I've given you a few examples of barter or the bartering system, which is where it all started. And I'm gonna take it all the way to digital and electronic currency, which is where we are today. And then we're gonna speculate. And remember, I am not a financial advisor. Anything I share is basically my opinion. So please don't take it as the gospel. And enjoy as much as you can this video. So let's go. So let's start with let's start with the planting. So let me go get turn this flame on. Let me go get some oil. Master Judge did send over the ham. So we're gonna use pre-sliced ham. So, and we're gonna use these eggs. So now I have all the ingredients. So let's take out how many eggs. I know it's a lot of eggs, so I'm gonna put in some extra eggs. And then we're gonna thaw the ham a little bit. 
let's do that. So back in what I believe was five or 600 BC, and this is the oil that I'm adding to the pan. And just for your information, these dispensers, they are also available on Goffo and we have them in different sizes. We have them for oil, we have them for vinegar. I'll pop it up here and it's also available in our store. So, you know, you can make your kitchen nice and classy and not just use an oil bottle, a traditional bottle that the cooking oil actually comes in. Use these and they're very handy with the handle and everything. Anyway, this is not a sales pitch, although it kind of has to be because I'm in business. But back then, in probably 5 600 BC, the currency or the primary currency started out as cows. And would you believe that to this day, in some countries like South Sudan, cows is still a currency because it's used for many dowries. And dowries are what some cultures use. So if, for example, you see Mas Max's daughter, and you're a male and you want to marry her, you have to give the family something of value. And in many cultures, that's money, but in places like South Sudan, that's still cows, heads of cows and you know land and all that kind of thing because that's still tangible to them. So that's kind of where money started. So the system of bartering started when one person, that person could be a farmer or they could have been an iron maker, a barber, a clothes maker, a shoemaker, whatever their profession is, or maybe another farmer has a product and they find another farmer or somebody else who has the need for that product. So what would happen is I would have chickens that are laying eggs and Mas Maxi, by the way, is my grandfather's alias or what most people call him. He would have cows or pigs and he would take his pig, let's say pig in this case, or cow to me and I would give him chicken and eggs. But he would not think that the value is equal because his cow, it, you can't, it's not like he can cut it up into pieces because back then you did not have the ability to store things as readily because even salt, which was used to cure meat, was very hard to come by and it was a difficult commodity to get your hands on. So it's not like he could cut up his cow and give me a piece of his cow and then turn around and I'm gonna do the eggs now guys and I'm using Himalayan salt. Um, for those who don't, don't know, it's supposed to be from the Himalayas mountain and it's supposed to be healthier, it's a pink salt. I say suppose because I have no facts to support these things, but some things I subscribe to the media on and this is one of them. So let's pray to doing what they claim it should. So we're just gonna do the eggs here. I'm not gonna, okay, that's a mess. I'm not gonna bother with the pancake. It's gonna take too long. Anyway, as I was saying, okay, my plantings are burning. Let's shift the pot a little bit. As I was saying, uh, I forgot what I was saying. Yes, yeah, so, right, so the problem is the cow, it's not like he could take off a leg of the cow and say, okay, give me that for your five chickens or your chickens and your eggs. No, it didn't work like that. So he had to find someone who had a product that was valued at something that he thought was equivalent to the cows. So bartering became cumbersome because now he may have to walk with that cow from district to district or from tribe to tribe, trying to find someone with something of equal value where he would feel that his trade is justifiable, right? Let's get some plates to put these in. So not, not only as a result of that was bartering uh, difficult because you need to go find somebody with the same need but also carrying around large livestock or carrying around wheat in droves big bags it was difficult so something had to break 
and it eventually broke because people started to feel like what their thing was valued was you know not fear and they had to come up with a solution so at the time the mining of gold let me grab the hand we get at least two pieces in here now at the time the mining of gold silver and other precious metals that was becoming a major thing so guess what became the next currency gold and silver bars now gold and silver bars well i know at least gold bars are still used to this day in certain parts of the world but gold became something that had value because it was rare it was obviously beautiful to look at and silver also stood out and bronze so they started to use gold and silver bars to trade so they would instead go now with a gold bar and buy Mas Maxi's cow and that person would know that based on the size of this gold bar and the weight of the gold bar that it would be equivalent to the cow. Now the problem with gold bars is it was uniform in value. So one bar may be bigger than the other and as such it created some amount of inequality. It was also, think about how difficult it is. Let's say for example you're buying land or 20 heads of cow or herd and you need to take 100 gold bars or 50 gold bars. Gold is very heavy and it's very bulky to carry so that became problematic. You're also at a greater risk because it's difficult for you to hide from anyone when you're carrying that much gold. So we had to move from gold to something else. Now, gold evolved into coins. I believe it was, well, even before coins, there were parts of Africa and Asia, predominantly China, that were using shells for currency. So basically, they would pick up shells and they felt like the shells had some mystical beliefs because it came from the ocean. And they would use these shells to transact and for exchange of goods and services. The problem with the shells is anybody could come by them because they could easily pick them up and although they couldn't be easily duplicated that became problematic because it's like a country which we all know that just prints money right so you can just keep generating shells and put new money or shells in this case into the economy so there needed to be a better solution the idea of shells gave birth to the idea of coins now these coins weren't necessarily uniform in value initially but eventually they started to stamp on them whether the king of the land or the head of the tribe and also started to assign value based on coin and these coins were primarily made from some were gold but predominantly silver and bronze now while coins brought a lot more equity and uniformity so it was easy to say that mass max's cow is valued 50 coins of this size or 20 coins of a bigger size it still was difficult to carry and it was also risky to carry so what they did was there were these people in the communities you could take your gold to them and give it to them to hold and they give you a note and that note will say this is how much gold you have and you could you could actually walk around with that note and use it to acquire goods and then you will take it back and it will be updated accordingly so no longer did mass maxi have to travel from way up at plum tree in st james rural area to come to montego bay to bring his cow to trade with my eggs because now he could just walk with a piece of paper which is much easier that actually is where banking started now after coins people experiment with all kind of things for money in some countries they actually tried using leather because leather wasn't so easy to come by so they tried using that for currency and that didn't last long because leather was it wasn't easy to come by but it was available so you would have too much leather and the chinese i believe were who started with paper and of course the paper was it didn't look like the paper today it was huge and when marco polo went to china 
I can't remember what year this is, but I, if I remember, I'll pop it up. Or when I research it, I'll pop it up below. But when he went to China and was going back to Europe, he took back some of that paper money to show them in Europe that this could be used as a valid means to conduct business. And as such, Europe adopted the paper money in a different form, of course, which is why you have Chinese money different from European money because nobody wanted to use each other's money. Now, after Europe did that and colonialism started, so now the Europeans are going to America and because they did not want to give them their freedom or Europe wanted the Americas to remain loyal to them and a part of their nation, they did not give them authorization to print currency in America. So in America, they had to start going across the globe just trying to find any currency that they could come by. And there was a Spanish dollar, I'm gonna pop up the name of it because it's not coming to mind right now. But they found that currency and it was a big dollar that could actually separate into eight pieces. And the good thing about that is you could break it apart because it was made from soft silver and give somebody change when they spend money. So in America, they were using silver coins, which were breakable, and in China and that part of the world, many countries had evolved to using paper for currency. But as you know, there's also risk associated with using paper for currency. If you need to buy some land to carry that much paper, let's say for example the land is a million dollars, we know a million dollars isn't easy to carry around and of course, as you know, many of us have been victims of robbery or attempted robbery at least, where somebody is trying to take the money that they think we have from us. So it's risky to carry around money and it's also bulky, although it's much better than gold and silver bars. but. In the, I want to say it's the 50s, but I'll put the correct year down here. Uh, the charge card was created, which was the first credit card. It was a little card, I'll pop up a picture of it. And the first company to do that, I believe, was American Express, then Visa, then MasterCard. And these cards were used, like our credit cards today, and they're still around after so long because they are very effective. But what they solved for was no longer did you have that risk of taking our own cash. Let's take out our eggs here. Let's put in some additional eggs. So no longer did you risk taking around that much cash. Guys, I have to concentrate for the eggs because I don't want no atal bun me. All right? So give me a minute, let me put in these eggs to make sure they don't splash on me and then I'll continue talking. All right, let's turn our ham here. Am I getting it on this camera? Yes, I am. Let me move this salt out of the way. Let's put a little salt in the egg. Let's put a little salt here as well. Okay. So while the paper has a clear value, of course, and is much better than the coins or the gold bars, it was still risky and bulky to carry if you need to buy a piece of land, for example, or 20 heads of cattle for a certain amount of money. So the plastic card came in and what it did is two things. You no longer had to travel with money, but it also facilitated a delayed payment. As you know, credit cards are credit based. You know what's amazing? Let me take a few steps back. Did you know that the day when money was created, we actually created debt? Here is why. Going back to Mass Maxi's cow and my eggs. When Mass Maxi bring the whole cow to me and I give him a few chickens and some eggs, you know what Mass Maxi said to me? You still owe me because my cow is three times the value 
of your chicken and eggs. You realize that's debt, right? So no wonder we're so in indebted. It started from day one. But as you know on this channel, we need to manage our debt and optimize them to work in our favor. And if we can't get them to work in our favor, we need to get rid of them. But anyway, let's go back to what we were saying. There's really no issues to credit cards, and of course debit cards came from that, but it didn't stop there because then the worldwide net came into play. And guess what happens now? Now you need to buy across borders because you don't have the village cow anymore that you're trying to trade, that is, for the eggs and the chicken or for the sandals. Now we're talking about globalization and with the advent of the internet, obviously cross-border transactions can be used with credit card, but that also gave rise to digital currency. Now, digital currency is, it actually was introduced with the pin and chip technology. And with pin and chip, you can access money anywhere, you can pay money to any jurisdiction, you can pull money from an ATM. It just gave more accessibility to the money that you have in a bank or other financial institutions. So things like Apple Pay, Google Pay, that came under the umbrella of digital currency and was born by the internet. And where you have paper currency, which could not buy across borders, because then you would have to put the money in an envelope and a stamp and ship it to some relative to buy things on your behalf. This digital currency and cards are able to satisfy that need, but it did not stop there. Because there's always persons in the world who believe that if you give banks control over money, God bless what they're gonna do with it, right? And because of that, people kept trying to create currency and that gave birth to electronic currency, which is mostly referred to as cryptocurrency. Now there are several cryptocurrencies out there, Bitcoin being the most popular. And in my mind, cryptocurrency is somewhat primitive because it's really a big spreadsheet. So that ledger that you hear them talking about, it's really a glorified spreadsheet. And in that spreadsheet, if you buy cryptocurrency, it lodges your unique ID, it lodges the crypto that you invested, let's say it's Bitcoin, and it keeps track of that on a spreadsheet. If you use from it, it reduces it on the spreadsheet. If you add to it, it increases it on the spreadsheet. So the difference is, and this is now where blockchain technology comes in, which is where now you're managing this in blocks and you have all these persons. So you hear people talk about Bitcoin mining or crypto mining. This is where different people across the world have these computers and all of them sync up and they use different algorithms to add or minus how you're managing your Bitcoins. But what those independent or those joint systems do is ensure that the cryptocurrency is trackable. Let's say, for example, you figure out a way to break the code and you inflate your cryptocurrency balance. The fact that you have all these different computers across the globe that are keeping track of this, if 100, for an example of the computers, say this is your balance, and one says your balance is otherwise, obviously they're gonna go with the 100. So that's the real basis for it, and like any other currency, there's some amount of trust, but this particular one, everything is trackable. Whereas with cash, you have to trust that it's not counterfeit. Whereas with gold, you have to trust that it's real gold. Every currency has risk. So does crypto. This one is trackable, however. Why people like crypto is because it's not associated with banks. So those people who don't have access to a bank account can use crypto to procure products. The unfortunate thing is it's very good in the underworld. So if you have illicit intentions and you want to indulge in criminality, I guess you can do that with credit cards and any other currency, but you are able to buy anything with crypto because it's not as easily traceable 
as you would with your credit card that can be traced back to you or a debit card or even a bank transfer, a wire transfer that is. So people like crypto because it's currency created by the people and it's independent and it leads me to my next point. We started with cows, now we're at crypto. Where are we going next? And here's my perspective, guys. And my meal here is almost done. I'm just gonna do a few more, uh, what, eggs and some planting and stuff. So we're almost done. But here's where we're going, in my opinion. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not learned on the subject matter that I'm about to talk to you about, meaning, Everything I'm saying is basically speculative and my opinion, which sometimes is flawed. So take it for what it is. But I believe with all the war that's being fought now, with the issues with scarce resources and commodities. So right now, if you think about it, Ukraine is one of the world's largest producers of wheat and they haven't been able to produce much wheat because of this war that's been happening for quite some time. So eventually, and you would have heard this said by the Russian prime minister or president, that before Russia starves the world and many of the countries will hit starvation. And there's no joke to that because there are countries that rely on that wheat also from that part of the world, as you know, with Russian oil, everybody needs oil because unfortunately, not all of us believe in renewable energy. And I'm gonna pop up a video here soon for, with step-by-step -step instructions as to how you can move to solar and the fact that it's not as expensive because we recently took on that project. But anyway, without renewable energy, and yes, I understand it's not affordable, so I'll tell you how to fund it as well in that video, so stay tuned. But because most places don't have renewable energy and they have to rely still on oil, what's happening is with a scarcity of oil, electricity prices, gas prices are going up. And eventually, I believe oil will not be a, com a commodity that we have ready access to. And if oil is not a commodity, wheat is not, and for whatever reason where you live gets cut off from the rest of the world, we will have to be sustainable and rely on ourselves. Are we ready for that? Think about a world where you now need to rely on your neighbor and what they plant or grow or rear, let's say for example in the case of livestock, in order to get food. Money is irrelevant. If you get lost or deserted on an island tomorrow, money won't help you at all. We'll be in the same position because the things that we need, which are food, shelter, and clothing, we will not be able to get them because we have money, because the other person is looking for something in return and money can no longer buy that thing. So I personally think we're gonna end up back where we started, which is with bartering, at least for a while, before we're able to evolve all over again. And we may introduce similar currencies, but we may do something totally different. So here's what I want you to tell me in the comments. Where do you think we're gonna go if this war, this climate change issues that are plaguing us, and this scarcity of resources. Right now, many countries in the world don't have sufficient water, and this scarcity is real. Where do you think we're gonna end up on this globe? And many of us don't have the money to go out of space. I feel like something is going on up there that we don't know about, and there's already communities there, but many of us won't be able to get there. So how are we gonna make sure we can stay and survive on Earth as long as possible? Tell me in the comments where you think money is gonna go. And I hope you found value in this content. And I'm almost done cooking, but until next time, my YouTube family, take care. Remember, by the way, to like the video and subscribe. I just cooked this amazing, it's not my fault why you can't get this food, you know. 
So I just put in all this effort to cook and to share a little bit of knowledge with you. And all the, the least you can do is like the video, even if you don't subscribe. Take care.